Does your new best friend's boss demand pictures of you, but they just look crap? Like this? Crap. Do you want to impress your crush with your Insta feed, but your profile picture looks like this? My eyes! Well, don't shut your eyes just yet, because I have a solution for you. For me? Yes, you, you cool little rascal. Your pics are going to look fire. They're gonna go from this to this. Now, let me hand you over to my friend, and he'll tell you what to do. Why, thank you, American television salesman guy. That definitely wasn't voiced by me. So, it seems like most AAA titles these days come bundled with a photo mode just so you can capture your favourite in-game moments and appreciate how gorgeous the graphics are. Marvel Spider-Man on the PlayStation 4 let you do exactly this with its photo mode, but the recently released Miles Morales game has some really cool new additional photography features for some really awesome shots. You can change your suits during photo mode, there's a few more filters, frames, aperture settings, and my new personal favourite that adds so much spice to photo mode, it's custom lighting. So spicy! Spider-Man PS4 was gorgeous, and photo mode really lets you appreciate all the finer details. But without the proper lighting from your environment, you kind of miss some of that. But with Insomniac's latest addition to Miles Morales' photo mode with custom lighting, damn you really see how beautiful this game is. So let me show you how to make the most of all the new lighting features in Miles' photo mode to get some spectacular photographs. Enough to make JJ proud. Love you JJ. Crap. So first of all take Spidey to your desired location. I'm just going to plop him right here in front of this cosy little shop window and enter photo mode. Once you've entered photo mode, play about with the angles to get an idea of what kind of shot you want. Now we're going to need to get familiar with the lighting controls because they are quite fiddly, so I'd recommend pulling the camera quite far back and looking face on at Spidey just to get a good look at your hero and his surroundings. Now that you've done that, press square to enter light mode. Bear in mind that once you're in this menu and you don't toggle move camera, you can't actually move the camera until you tell it to. So before we jump the gun and use any of the three empty light slots, let's go into natural light first. One of my favourite features of Horizon Zero Dawn's photo mode on the PS4 was the ability to change the natural lighting in your environment and you can do the same here and I love it. This feature controls the natural light that comes from that huge burning ball of gas in the sky. <laughs> If you're outdoors in the game and using these controls, you'll find that you can drastically change the look of your shot already by changing the intensity, elevation and rotation of the light source in the sky, otherwise known as the sun. Ambient lighting also adds some nice finishing touches to your shot too and can just lift the shadows and brighten up everything overall. For my particular shot, I'm going to go with something moody and just going to bring the ambient lighting down and use enough natural light to maybe just illuminate a few details on my if you feel like this is all a bit too much at the moment, then don't worry, we're not making any permanent changes to our light, and you can honestly just come back and change them as we continually make tweaks to our photos to get some smexy shots. Okay, so let's use the actual lights now, uh, but we have to get used to the controls here because I think they're pretty awkward at first. I'm starting off with the first empty slot for light and then entering a new menu by pressing X. Here you can toggle between two different lights. You've got the spotlight and the sphere light. The sphere light acts like a light bulb and illuminates everything around it at a 360 degree angle, including any walls, windows, weather or NPCs. Important to take into account just so your shot doesn't look too messy with too much lit up at once. The spotlight on the other hand is a bit more directional and you can add either a wide or narrow light onto your subject with either a soft or harsh circle of light. Both the sphere and the spotlight have intensity, shadows, colour and distance features. The intensity is just how bright and intense your light source will be. The cast shadow feature lets you decide if your subject will be fully illuminated or can still cast shadows for some visual contrast. The colour slider lets you choose from a variety of hues, including just a plain white light if you need it, and the distance parameter controls how far the light will travel, which is useful if you only want your light to hit miles and maybe not an NPC or surface in the background. I like to use a combination of the sphere lights and the spotlights for my shots and my method normally involves using a couple of different coloured lights to the side of Miles just to make him pop and then the lights at the front just to bring out any details we might be missing. Ok, controls! Around our saint-like hero is a funky looking halo and in the centre of that ring, at Miles' feet, 
is an axis point from where the light source moves. So you can move the sphere light or spotlight towards or away from this axis point by moving the left stick either up or down. Okay, so that's easy enough, or is it? So to move the light around miles, just move the stick left or right and the light will travel either counterclockwise or clockwise. Okay, I know this seems really straightforward, but it does get really confusing if you're taking a shot and you can't see the axis point or ring around miles or even just see the light sources properly. It's just hard to see and guess where your light is traveling and which nether realm it's maybe disappeared into. Goodbye light. Anyway, last of all, L2 and R2 move the light source up and down, which will help us when we decide where exactly we want to place the light and where it will illuminate our subjects. So first of all, let's go for the spotlight. I'm placing this to the right of Miles, or our left if you want to get technical, and I'm going to start off with either a red or an orange light. Honestly though, you don't have to do the same in terms of colour, it's all just about experimenting and doing whatever fits the mood of your shot. So I want this light to hit the back of Miles, just for some cool rim lighting. Notice that if I choose the sphere light, it illuminates a bit too much around it, and it makes the shot look a bit messy, Hence here why I'm going for the spotlight. I'm just going to reduce the distance so the light only really hits miles and not the floor. And I'm just going to use the right stick to change the angle of the spotlight to target more of Miles' head and chest. I don't want the light too intense though, so I'm just going to change the settings for that. And so far, so good. So light numero dos. Let's put a spotlight to Miles' left and go for a light blue cayenne colour. I love the combination of blue and red, it feels very Hollywood-esque and it's very similar to the teal and orange colour palette that's widely used in a lot of films these days. And that's another thing, there's a lot of different colour palettes online that you can kind of copy off and use in your coloured lights. So again, let's make sure the light isn't too intense and it only really hits Miles and not the floor using that distant slider and kind of just gets Miles' head and chest area. So I've turned off cast shadows here because I like how it illuminates his back a little bit too. Okay, and light number three. Here I'm just going to go for a sphere light that just illuminates the front of Spider-Man. Normally either white or a subtle warm light that just brings out Spider-Man's face and costume a little. The positioning here is important too, just to bring out the spider emblem and light his face quite well. Again, don't worry if you don't nail it, just because you will definitely have to come back and make some more tweaks. Okay, so let's have a look at the difference the lights make. So first, let's toggle the ambient lighting, then the red light, the blue spotlight, and the orange light at the front. Now I'm just going to enter camera mode and get a more interesting angle. I like decreasing the FOV just to get a shot where everything looks closer together. It just looks a bit more cinematic. Now I'll just turn the focus distance all the way down just so the camera focuses on Spidey and then turn the aperture up just to blur the background behind Miles. I'm just going to tweak the spotlight behind Miles because I feel like it's illuminating the chest and the side too much. So I want it to look a little bit more subtle by moving the spotlight behind Miles and just raising the light a bit too. Again, I'll do the same with the blue light because I feel like it's too obvious it's an artificial light. And really, I just want it to make Miles pop and not turn him into Papa Smurf. Last of all, we're just going to move the sphere light and illuminate Spidey's face a bit more, especially how you can see how his lenses were covered in a bit too much shadow previously. So we'll just move the light Light, a bit more towards the right and raise it to be a bit more eye level with our hero. And there we have our shot. We can just add some finishing touches with filters, vignettes, film grain, some frames and maybe a nice couple of film bars for a cinematic look worthy of the silver screen. So you can change the suit once you've established your shot, but honestly, I think not every suit works well with the lighting you may have chosen for that scene, and that's just because the colours, textures and overall shape and silhouette for each suit are different. So they'll all react in different ways to the lights you've set up and won't really have the same cool effect as the suit you initially chose. So definitely decide on your suit before you commit to setting up some lights. And there we have it, a shot that's worthy enough to impress your crush. Okay, let's try another example with the same lighting technique but in Times Square and in a slightly different order. So I'm going to take this next shot in front of the stairs because I think they'll make for a really cool looking background. And let's get a shot with Miles about to web swing too, just for something with a bit more action. So here I haven't moved the camera all the way out, but once you get used to the controls, you don't always have to be zoomed all the way out all the time. First of all, I'll just blur the background and change the natural lighting. And you can see how much difference it makes to the red stairs and the snow in the background. And I'm just gonna make the stairs pop a bit more for something very vibrant. 
Next, I'll place a warm spotlight in front of Miles, just to illuminate the front of him. Nothing too bright or too sharp though. So the next light will provide a nice glow underneath Miles, a sphere light that isn't too harsh, uh, but just brings out his costume a little bit more. And for the last light, we'll just get a sphere light, make it a bluish colour, place it above Miles and towards the left of the shot, just to provide a cool outline and to really make Spidey pop against the red stairs. I'm just playing about with the distance and the positioning just to light up less of Spider-Man's feet and more of his head and shoulders and knees and toes. Knees and toes. After just a few more tweaks and balancing the colours out, let's just blur the web with the near focus distance and aperture settings and add more of a tilt to the shot just to make it look more interesting and bring the camera in for something that looks a bit more dynamic. Again, you can see the difference the lights make on different suits and it just shows that not every suit reacts well to the custom lighting you've just set up. With a couple more tweaks and some film bar frames, we have yet another cinematic looking shot. Oh, and speaking of cinema, let's do one more. How can we do a photo mode video and not look at the classic Spider-Verse suit? Here I've taken Miles to the end of a small pier for a moody shot. So the PS4 kind of just trimmed it out at the beginning, but I adjusted the ambient lighting just to get that cool rim light to the left of Spidey, just to make him pop from the background and emphasise the comic book look from his costume. Here again I'm just doing a similar method with two side lights and a light at the front to make Spider-Man pop from the background and to bring out some extra features. I thought using purple for the colour of the light would be good, just because it seems like purple is used quite a lot in the film's colour palette so you definitely get something that looks like it belongs in the Spider-Verse movie universe. Verse verse. That's a lot of verses. If we look at the before and after, you can definitely tell that the colours make a huge difference in the style of the shot. So let's bring the camera in, play about with the filters, vapour feels very Spider-Verse-esque, increase the vignette and film grain settings just for a cooler cinematic look, and maybe a Spider-Sense sticker just for that extra little cherry on top. Oh. What was that? One more I hear you say? Aye aye captain! I can hear you! <coughs> I'm not gonna do that. So for the final location, let's use this tunnel and get an upside down shot from Spider-Verse Miles. Maybe he's gonna do the classic MJ kiss, who knows? So I'm just gonna play about with a natural light and go for something moody this time around. Again, we're getting a warm light to the side of Miles just to make him pop from the background and a contrasting blue color on the opposite side. For that Spider-Verse look again, I'm just gonna place a purple light in front of Miles, just something subtle. And for the before and after, you can see the difference each light makes when you slowly introduce them to the shot. So we'll just move our camera about ever so slightly for a cooler background and hey, that looks pretty good. We're finished. Yes. There's so many possibilities with the new lighting features for photo mode now and just so many different ways to get creative and I love it. I do miss having to get creative with the original PS4 photo mode. Uh, where you just have to scour the city for light sources for funky shots. I guess you can still do that here, but when it's so easy to change the lighting in your environment, it's, it's hard to not want to get the best out of your shots. Honestly, I think these pics would maybe even make JJ shed a tear. As for the apple of my eye, Damn, she's gonna like all my Instagram pics, and not just the ones of my cat. So true believers, I wanna see your pics now. If you've used my techniques and found this video helpful, then tweet your shots to me at 3 out of 5 on the Twitters, or just use the hashtag TofMiles, and maybe I can feature them in a video one day. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you so much for your views and comments over the last two weeks since my last video. And thank you so much for 2,000 subscribers. I just don't get where you all came from, but thank you. It's just weird because in my last video, I said, oh yeah, we're on 300 subscribers. Let's go for 400. And it's just like 1,700 more. That's good maths. And yeah, just, just crazy. If you do like my videos enough, you can consider supporting the channel by subscribing to my Patreon. But honestly, just a like, comment, and hitting the subscribe button just means the world to me overall. Again, thank you so much, you smexy people. Don't forget to be greater, be yourself, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.